What is that? It's the Anyumara. What we ate yesterday, the fried one. Huge fish. So we ate yesterday. Welcome to Palomao, Suriname. This remote village located in the Surinamese rainforest is one of the country's most isolated but most rewarding destinations. Located along the Tapanahoni River, it offers a unique look at the local Amerindian people and their way of life. In this documentary, we're going to meet Amerindian locals, learn more about their crafts and culture, and explore the wilds of the Tapanahoni River and the surrounding jungle. From fishing for river monsters to trying unique jungle beer, Palomao is a full adventure and unique travel opportunity you can't find anywhere else. So join me as we venture deep into the Surinamese rainforest. Let's go to Palomao, Suriname. Hey, yes, we're to the airport in about five minutes. I'll see you in a second. Hey, thank you so much. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. So we're going to scale? With your luggage, yes. Yeah, okay. Step on it. Yes. This is how it works? Yes. So I gotta take my... Do you have any... Um, have you fill in any form? No, I haven't, but I can... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Julius, you're my guide for the next two days? Yes, for the next two days. Awesome. So Julius is going to be with us on the plane. We're going with Gum Air. Gum. G-U-M. And we're traveling with Med's Travel Tour. <laughs> VIP Lounge. What is this? <laughs> so Julius is going to be taking me down to Palomu. <laughs> this is like super deep into the jungle. We have to fly on this caravan. It's like 11-seater charter plane. As soon as you get here to the airport, you have to go in. They basically just weigh you with your luggage to make sure they have the exact weight. They don't want to go overboard with the amount of you know weight on the plane. And then yeah, you once you're done checking in, you come here to this VIP area, sit down, relax. A lot of people here, they're all on getting on this plane and this plane as well. So a lot of different groups going to different areas in the country. And I'm excited. Palomu. What, Palomu, are, we, yeah. what are we gonna be doing there? Uh, we are going to explore the jungle. Explore the jungle? Yeah. Immediately as we land there, we are going. Uh, I'm gonna take David to the jungle to climb the Poti Hill. What? <laughs> okay. Poti Hill. Okay, we're boarding in 10 minutes. Let's go. Hoffman International. <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't our plane, the one we just passed. This is our plane. Same thing, though. Yeah, the Same as coming, our plane. Yeah. The one is coming. Oh, the one is coming. Yes. Okay. Nice. Thank you, dude. Right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Have a nice flight. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Let's get on this flight. Woo! Take this with me. Let's board this puppy. Okay, so this is it. Where am I sitting? All the way back here? Uh, where you want, I don't know. But where I want? This is amazing. <laughs> I would like the back. <laughs> My man, how many times have you been on this plane? Um, I don't know. I, this is more than um, 12 years now. There you go. There you go. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seats. The back is like a little couch where I'm sitting. Check this out. This is like the entire seat. And the reason I decided to sit here is because from here, I get awesome views over here, awesome views over here. Amazing. We're actually doing a quick stop to pick four people up, but we're taking off in two seconds, guys. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. We're about to take off. Super adventure coming up. Let's go to Palomau. Palomau.
We're now passing the biggest lake in the country, the Pocopomo Reservoir. I was actually down there yesterday in Browns Mountain and it took us 90 minutes to drive back up to Paramaribu. And right now it took us less than 12 minutes to pass the entire lake. Crazy how fast the air travel is, for real. It's like so, so, so fast. And next to the lake, you have a bunch of gold mines, lots of gold mines in the area. You can see all these like brown patches in between all the bush, that's gold mines. And over here we have the Surinamese River. I was also down there yesterday and the day before, and it's an island, love it down there. It's an incredible experience, real jungle experience. But today we're going even deeper, deeper, deeper into the jungle, real deep. You know, Amazon rainforest is amazing. So much flora and fauna. I really want to get closer to animals, and hopefully we can. As you can see, I mean, just rainforest down here. That's all you see is rainforest and clouds. We've been flying for about 30 minutes and now we're gonna descend and go pick up four more passengers on the Surinamese River. So it's four more passengers that are going to the same lodge. You just have to get on the plane and we keep going. But now, because we're descending, we're going through a lot of clouds and now it's getting choppy. Uh, oh my God, in a small plane like this, break sweats, man, break sweats. We are inside a cloud. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> this always happens when you get inside clouds because a lot of air pockets. So you're always gonna have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of bumps. Uh, the problem is with a small plane like this, you feel it going like this. It's like, ah. oh my god. Very bumpy. Very bumpy. <laughs> I don't see anything. Oh my god, we finally made it out of the cloud. Are oh, we going back into another cloud? No, don't tell me that. <laughs> I hate the clouds, dude. I hate them. But now you can really see the rainforest. Check this out. Making a quick stop, picking up the passengers. Oh my god. Landing is a <laughs> intenso. Intenso. Wow. Look at the greenery. It just blows my mind. So many people in there who have never left that area, you know? Straight up jungle. I don't see the airstrip. Where's the airstrip? <laughs> somewhere, somewhere in the jungle, right? Oh my god. Oh, is that it? He has to land in there? Yeah. Oh my god. This guy better be a good pilot. <laughs> that green spot. That green spot. I know, I know, but it looks tiny. Oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> I was very, very nervous. I mean, the strip is very small. It's like two football fields. He went down really fast, came down, slowed down. Perfectly smooth landing. I mean, a little bit of bumps, but not so bad. Quickly turned around. And then right here we have the, the other four people that are coming on board. Former passengers, I think they're from the Netherlands. Love you, Netherlands. Love you guys. How are you doing? I'm fine. Very good? I'm good. Very good. <laughs> Ready to go? Ready to go. All right, taking off again. And now we only have like 10, 15 more minutes. <laughs> Here we go. Taking off from that school was epic. I mean, it was a runway, there was also a school right there. And right when we took off, you could see the beautiful Surinamese River. It is so gorgeous, so much lush, so much green. Just trees never ending. Very little homes, it's like villages here and there, it's like sparse throughout the whole entire country. But yeah, wow, look at that village right here. Man, I love the river, the river is sick. I love border places like this. It is really, you connect with it, and it feels so much different. Our flight is coming to an end, we're like literally about to land in two minutes. You can see we're going down, descending really, really fast. You can see the jungle, like the perspective's changed so much now. Now you see, and the trees are like right there in front of you. Like 80 foot trees, huge trees, 100, 200, 300 year old trees right here. Wow, just a massive, massive forest. And this all connects down all the way to the Amazon rainforest. You know, it is in Suriname, so it's not considered Amazon because it doesn't have the actual Amazon River in it, but it's still part of the major Amazon rainforest all the way up into Suriname. Wow, look at all these trees. We're next to the river, landing strip. Here we go. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we did awesome, it. awesome. 
Okay, let's go. Palomeo, here we go. Hello. Hello. So Julius, we made it to Palomu. Yes, we are in Palomu right now. Perfect. So what are we going to be doing for the next two days? Uh, we are going now to uh, jungle track. To the jungle track. Then we're probably going to have some lunch um, out there. Yes. And tonight we're going to see what the night can give. And, and then tomorrow more tomorrow jungle. Very early in the jungle to see the rapids. Oh wow. Yeah. So guys, I mean, basically that was our day. We started off with an amazing, amazing breakfast. Very ethnic mix there. It tasted so good. My personal favorite was the liver. Liver with the, with the sprouts, so good. And then we came all the way over here to Palomao by charter with gum air. Incredible experience nice flying and yeah i can't wait to experience this well guys i hope you love this video if you did please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content i'll see you in the next travel food adventure in palomao peace What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Palomao, Suriname, South America. Super interior of the country, the very end, in the jungle. We just flew here with gum air. This is my guide, Julius, and this is my other guide. Ose. Ose, Ose, local, local guide. And yeah, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go see our room, the bungalow. Then after that, we're gonna go have lunch in the jungle, like on a rock, you said? <laughs> on an island, on an I guess? Island, yes, on an island. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, we're gonna go for a jungle trek and experience what the jungle is all about. Are you guys ready? You good, my man? Yeah. You ready to go? Yes. <laughs> so you're with me too for the next day? Yeah. Awesome. On tomorrow. Perfect, perfect. Taponahoni River. Yes. And I'm in number one? Yes. So this will be your, um, yeah, your room. And here we go. My bungalow for the night, 1A. Beautiful, love it. Little wood cabin, as you can see two beds, two twin beds. Here we have a little desk, very nice. Over here we have the bathroom. Bathroom, very nice, clean, I like it. And we have the mosquito nets. Obviously what happens here is that every single night around 6 p.m., they put the mosquito nets down, wrap it completely under the bed. You leave it a little bit open so you can get in, and you just jump in when you're ready and you sleep and you sleep so well with this because it really protects the mosquitoes from coming in you get, really gotta check though sometimes there's a little hole and they'll sneak in but if not you're good and right when you walk outside the door you have the beautiful river right there wow this is real paradise i mean people love beaches like paradise for me this is paradise the wilderness the animals you hear nothing amazing okay guys i'm really hungry let's go to the jungle and eat some lunch sick okay. So we're walking over here to the river and there's the bungalows beautiful bungalows so mine is over here 1a so there's actually two in there so it's 1a and 1b then you have 2a 2b 3a 3c like that oh, oh the plane and again the only way to get here is by flying with a charter on gum air it's the only way to get here you can't drive here you can take a boat but it might take a few days <laughs> Okay, so I have to go around to get on the boat. Get through here. Okay, nice. I love it. Woo! Yeah. I was just here yesterday. Well, not here, but in the forest, in the middle of nowhere. Love these huge boats. There's like huge canoes. They convert it into like, you know, 15, 20 percent canoes with the engine. The paddle, man. I'm buying that paddle from you. One, a, a half an hour. Half hour. But I mean, um, just in a few minutes, we're gonna stop here to have lunch. Okay. Just here. Oh, just here, lunch? Yeah. All right. So we're actually gonna stop right here for lunch, and then after that, it's about another 20, 30 minutes deeper into the jungle for our trek. Wow. Lots of clouds today, so the sun's coming in and out. So much beautiful bush here. This river is actually way calmer than the Surinamese River. And right here, we have the island where we're having lunch. A lot of rapids around here. Whoa! <laughs> it's fun. It's really fun. And that's it. We just post up right here. Yes. Wow. That's it. And then we'll have lunch, and then we continue. Perfect. So we're just gonna post up right here. Awesome. What are we having for lunch? Do you have an idea? Just bread? No. I'm joking. I'm joking. This is my type of lunch, man. In the jungle, with no one around. Very peaceful. Wow. This is so serene. Wow, look at this, the jungle right here. 
So there's like a little campground they have here. So if you want to post up, have some lunch, chill. Suriname, Suriname, add to your bucket list. This place has been changing my life every second along the way. <laughs> yeah, yuca frita. And it is the sweet cassava, manioc. Animada. Mm -hmm. This is the most tasty part this year. Uh, yeah, the peanut. You want the peanut? Yeah. yeah Over the sure. um, manioc? Yeah, yeah. So basically, this is a coleslaw. Yeah. This is let's say a coleslaw. coleslaw. This is a peanut that brought what well, the Indonesians brought this yeah. delicious thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got the amazing fish and we have the yuca frita. I love the yuca frita. Oh. All right, and this is lunch. Delicious lunch. Look at that. The fish, the yuca frita. Oh, I love the yuca frita. Mmm. The peanut sauce. So delicious. Mmm. When you come to Suriname, you're gonna eat cassava every day. And I highly recommend the, the fried version. The cassava fried or yuca frita is so good. Cassava or yuca is almost like a super dense plantain. In the middle, extremely dense, outside, fried. And then you got the peanut dressing. And next up we have the fish. I'm gonna be very careful here. We're gonna nervous with the bones. Mmm. Wow. Love this fried fish. Look, open it up. You already see some of the bones, some of the spines right there. This is basically like a rib, right? Looks like they're ribs. So you get through this, start pulling out. Very nice. Remind me like a like fried snapper. Mmm. 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 -hmm. Bones. All those bones and fish. Be very careful. I don't know why it's like a bee hanging around me. Oh! Bring off. Deep woods. I ran out. I have some regular spray. Not good. Let me show how it works. You either have lunch in the resort or lunch in the jungle. Oh, I'm just gonna jump in for some more yuca. Oh. Just dip it. Let it soak up all that peanut right there. It's so good, so, so good. In Miami, I grew up with this stuff. You got frita all day. It's just way better than french fries, way better. Next up, we have the coleslaw. It's actually tomatoes, cabbage, carrots, what else, maybe some onions. Mm -hmm. What I like the most about this coleslaw is they added corn, nice corn, because it's a nice little crunch. You can see all the cabbage, tomato, and the carrots. There's actually some cucumber in here as well. And that's our jungle feast. You got the fish from the river, you have the yuca frita, and you have the delicious coleslaw. Mm. These peanut sauces are so freaking sweet. Mm. The bomb.com. But the star of the show today is the yuca frita with the peanut, delicious peanut sauce. It really is incredible. That's what lemonade. It's not lemonade, it's, it's something like, uh, yeah. It was like punch, yeah. like fruit punch. Mm. There's bugs all over me. I'm mm. done, yes. Mm -hmm. So lunch was incredible. A little crazy with the bee around me, but it was fine. The, the yuca's the best though. The yuca's like out of control. And uh, what an experience out here. I mean, they were like on benches. Unfortunately, I couldn't do that with the camera and the bench. So I posted up on the table and you can see this is what they brought. They brought this, like, this little cooler right here. And that looks like an airplane cooler. It actually says KLM. Crazy, and then over here we have just a regular, a regular cooler, right? Getting back on the boat now. We have about a 30-minute boat ride until we get deeper into the jungle to where we're going, and then we're gonna go like on a 90-minute trek up to the top of a like a little hill. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, this boat's not sturdy. <laughs> oh, feels good though. So we're gonna go for about one hour. Get to the top of the hill, and you have one hour all the way back. 
amazing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we see some animals. And Hopefully. wow, this is like, yeah. we're in the jungle. A really cool fact that Julius has told me is that 80% of Suriname is untouched virgin jungle. 80%. All right, we made it. Hear the bird? Wow, look at these trees. What we are hearing there is the karakara, the carrying crow. And uh, this is a um, huge bird with white chest and um, all over black, just white chest, red. Um. Yeah, unfortunately we can't see him, he's way too high up. Yes, yes. And this is like, I guess, a little hut where this you guys can rest. Camp. So when you guys come early in the morning, you guys have breakfast, breakfast here camp. and you start your trek. Julius, find me a sloth. One sloth. Find me a sloth. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm joking, did I? I? I saw one on the street. Oh. One. The one thing I do smell is parrot like poo. Huh. Luckily, this tra this trail is pretty nice. I mean, it's not like a it's not too steep. No, no, no. Very easy. Very for beginners, you know. Yeah, yeah. If you go to Browns Mountain, that's for, like for super advanced. <laughs> they make um, the roofs and the wall by cutting it. Take off all the pins that is are on it and then um, like planting it. The palm tree that we are seeing here, the Astrocarium palm, they um, are making a um, roof and also wall for the um, houses. And also the young leaf in the middle, you have a young leaf, that's the one here, mm -hmm. that you can see and uh, they make um, fan, mats. Astrocarium, if you didn't know, there's like over a few hundred species of palm tree. <laughs> there's Astrocarium. <laughs> A very nice thing about this trek is that you're really covered by the bush, so you don't even get any sun. There's a little bit of a breeze. You know, we do have the river right there. We do have the trees, so a lot of air flowing through. And luckily, there's not that many mosquitoes, but I did spray myself like crazy, just to prevent any of them from biting me. And look at this, so many logs, so many. This is like, this is the best part about this trek, man. More logs. The truck's amazing, and my favorite part is all the logs you have to jump over. Another one. Small creek, the only way to cross is to go on some of these logs. Super thin logs, okay? Whew. Okay, okay. Doing it with one hand is a little hard. <laughs> all right. Wow, 20 minutes in. I'm feeling the burn. <laughs> These are the um, seeds from this tree the ingi pipa and um, normally the seeds are inside here okay and um, when they uh, open then they fall and you can um, find just this like this uh, shell in the past the Amerindian used to um, use it as a pipe in combination with the um, bamboo and smoke okay but also the bark of this is very thin like whistler and they used to um, like um, rolling um, tobacco oh wow yeah and um, smoke. So all the paddles that you find here in Suriname are made from this tree. And what's the name of it? Paddlewood tree. It also works as a telephone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, we are we have here um, the Basra locust. Um, this tree is most used for the dugout and it is very, very hard. So if you look at this size of this tree, it can be more than 300 years old because it grows very, very slow. Yeah, very, very hard. So if you cut it and the steel chainsaw, you put it on it, then you see like fire is coming out. <laughs> wow. That hard. Well, I mean, it's a massive tree. How tall is it? A few hundred feet, huh? 45 minutes into our jungle trek and we haven't seen not a single animal. A few birds up in the trees and trees, that's it. So when you go out in the jungle and you're looking for wildlife, it's always hit or miss. Oh my God, I got another log a little creek here to cross Whew, I got it I got it mud. hopefully I don't get into the mud I don't want to step in mud today <laughs> and uh, yeah so whoa whoa this is like real wilderness here and then uh, and yeah so I mean this is how it is you might see something you might see nothing you might see a handful of things we're really hoping for an anteater a sloth a tortoise something but it's not looking good but you never know Still got 15 minutes, and then we have a whole hour to go all the way back, so we'll see something for sure. Making it up to the top of the hill. That's it, huh? One hour, yeah. and we made it. Whoa. There's a giant rock. Look at this boulder. Huge. It's 
steep rock. Very steep. If you're not in good shape, don't come up here. <sighs> wow. The jungle. Oh, there's a mountain. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Roosevelt Mountain. Yeah. Cool. We made it. Yeah. This is the summit? Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh my god, you can still hear it. <laughs> we made it. We spent 30 amazing minutes up here admiring the view. I sent the drone up, got incredible aerials. And that's it. We're headed back down. We have another one hour to get to the very bottom. Hopefully we see an animal. What do you think, Julius? You think we'll see something? I hope it. You hope it? Yeah. <laughs> give, give me an anteater, man. <laughs> make the noise, make the noise. One thing I want to mention is that this rock, all the plants up here are like spiny plants. It's almost like pinchy, very cacti looking, right? Bromelia. What are they? Bromelia. Bromelia. Yeah, I mean, it's just like pinchy. You gotta definitely wear long pants. If not, you're gonna get cut up. As we make our way down this rock, you can see it's very, very steep. You gotta sort of like lean back, you know? It's the only way to like balance yourself correctly so you don't just fly down the mountain. And yeah, it's the wilderness, look at that. Jungle, jungle, oh my god, this is the pinchy one. For me, that completely reminds me of my time in Malawi, walking through bush out there. Spent like 22 days in Malawi, lots of national parks, and it really felt like this, especially going up this rock. Oh, there's some animals in here making noise. And, uh, but yeah, this is not Africa, this is South America. This is basically part of the Amazon rainforest. I think I said this before, but the reason it's not called the Amazon rainforest is because the Amazon river doesn't flow through it but it basically is the northern part of the Amazon rainforest. We're making our way back and we're hearing the screaming police, is that what you said? Screaming piha. Screaming piha, but you said the Suriname police? The bush police. The bush police? Uh -huh. It's well right known. up here? <laughs> so when you hear that noise, that is the Suriname police coming after you. No, just kidding, it's a bird. You were in the river? Yeah, they were feeding. You were in the river? Yes, they were um, swimming. Fishing. So while we were on our hike, the captain and his friend went fishing and they caught some piranha. And if you guys didn't know, there's piranha throughout all these rivers. They're not dangerous, but if you have a cut, do not go in the water. Yeah, we are um, in the Tapanahoni River. And it is one of the um, longest river. It is a branch of the Maroni River that um, is by the border with uh, French Guiana. So we are not that far from French Guiana. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so. And in, the, in the Tapanahoni River, we have the Maroon living downstream, and in the upper stream, we have the Amerindians uh, living, the, the Wayana and the Trios. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we just got back to our resort. It was a quick 30 minute boat ride. And what we're gonna do now is basically relax for two hours, and then we have dinner at 7.30. That's sort of the routine here. You know, you have an activity, then you have some time to chill, relax in the hammock, you know, take a shower, just chill out, and then you have dinner, or lunch, or breakfast, whatever you want. <laughs> so I slept like an hour, took a little break. I was really, really tired. I've had already, a, you know, an eight day trip. It's been really intense flying around, you know, boat, car, flight, boat, car, crazy. But um, yeah, this is uh, what this place looks like at night, as you can see. So I think I'm gonna skip out on filming dinner tonight. I think I'm just gonna take it really easy, put my camera away, relax. But I hope you love this video. Today was epic. We went through the jungle. We had a jungle food out there. Super delicious yuca. The yuca was the best thing. The fish was good, coleslaw was okay, but the yuca with the peanut dressing. The peanut dressing is making the food here in Suriname like unbelievable. I love that influence from Indonesia. It's just so, so good. It's so sweet. I mean, everything has that extra sweet to it. Well, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Suriname. See you tomorrow morning. Good morning, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Palomel, Suriname, deep in the interior of the country. As you can see, I'm in the middle of the jungle right now on a boat, and it's 6.20 in the morning. Today, what we're doing is we're gonna go have some breakfast in the jungle, then we're gonna go on a one-hour boat ride deeper, deeper into the jungle, then from there, we're gonna go on a jungle trek, and then we're gonna come back. I mean, it's gonna be a long day. I think it's gonna be six, seven hours out there, and I'm excited. We're also gonna go fishing, right? Yeah. Fishing for piranhas? I'm excited, let's go, let's go. Woo!
so early. <laughs> This morning I want just to explain that uh, we are from the jungle, we have been born in the jungle, grew up in the jungle and uh, this is what we call our home. For us nothing is unexpected or um, something that you are going to experience, it's not experience. This is just the wildlife that we have in, in the interior of Suriname. To grow up as a child it is um, the best best place in the world because the nature are learning us how to um, live with the um, yeah the, the the river the 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 nature and everything here in the interior you know if you don't um, have other things or you don't have see like a, a big city then you don't know about that you can hear about that but you have nothing but i want to tell you if you from the big city come to this jungle you will experience something else that you missed forever in your life yeah so you have to just experience that we're going to have breakfast here on this rock and just enjoying the nature. <laughs> wow, this is an epic breakfast. 6.40 in the morning on the river. Look at this. I don't even believe how he parked his boat here. He just like threw it on top of two rocks. Crazy. <laughs> There is coffee here. Okay. There is um, sugar, creamer, and there is hot water here. So we got coffee, we got tea, we got bananas, bread, we got eggs. Yes. Eggs as well. What it could be. Awesome. I have um, I have fried this this morning. Okay. Oh. And there is two boiled eggs also. So for breakfast, it's very simple. I got a raisin bread. Got some gouda cheese, and I got an egg. I love egg sandwiches, and this is like perfect. Oh man, with the raisins. <coughs> then pull mm. up in. Delicious bread. Everybody's here. Mm. The whole group just arrived. It's like 20 people. Mm. It's amazing. I love the good cheese. It's like melted with the heat here in the jungle. It's like completely melted. Mm. Oh wow. And we got some super, super strong coffee. Super black. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, really good. No sugar. I wish I could do this every morning. <laughs> <laughs> but nice. um, it's not always that you can eat on this rock here or, or have breakfast on this rock because sometimes it's covered by water. Okay. And sometimes when um, it's too um, low, the water stand. Then we can uh, even come here because we have to go upstream because it's make it difficult to uh, navigate in the river. So when you come out here to Palo Alto, you will probably have breakfast here at least once. So this is saying that usually they come here every single morning, but it depends if you know if the, if the tide is too high or too low. So if it's too low, it's good. You know, right now it's okay, and if it can get higher, it can actually cover the entire rock. It's a very simple breakfast. You got bread, eggs, jam, peanut butter, and coffee. I mean, very unique to be out here and just in the middle of the jungle on a rock having breakfast at seven in the morning. I'm gonna have some super strong coffee here in Suriname. Like straight black, black, black. We're gonna relax for a little bit, enjoy the sunrise, and then we're gonna leave and go on a one hour boat ride all the way deep into the jungle. And from there, we're gonna start our trek and hopefully we see some animals. I'm really hoping for a sloth, maybe some tortoises. I mean, just something. Give me some type of animal. I really came out here to see some wildlife. That was a really enjoyable breakfast. The whole group is really cool. All my friends from the Netherlands, love you guys. And, uh, basically, that's it. We're gonna go on a one hour boat ride now, getting deeper into the jungle. And once we make it to our spot, we're gonna go for a trek and hopefully see some wildlife. Let's go. Vultures. A vulture up there? Three. Oh, wow. They are drying their um, feathers. There's four yellow-headed vultures there and they're basically just drying their wings right now. Okay. I haven't seen it before. It's the Mabuka Rapid where we are going to um, really to visit today. And uh, we are, it takes the whole wideness of the river. And we are going now to the point where we um, normally go down um, through the rapid by boat. It's a huge rapid, it takes the entire width of the river and we're gonna go to around this little island to get to a point where we can go down it because the thing is with the rapids, the only reason this rapid is because there's huge rocks in between, right? So there's lots of rocks and the water is making its way down and it just comes really, really fast and goes down in, in sort of like levels, right? So we have to find the right point and these guys all know exactly where to go. I mean, he's been doing this for years so he knows exactly where to go and where to enter so we don't hit a rock. 
This is a huge rapid, huge. swimming there or no? This is the Mabuka Rapid that we just um, go through and uh, we are going to enjoy the view. <laughs> Never been to a rapid like this. All the rocks all the way. Wow. We are now at the Kude Baku Rapid. Another one. This one is a little bit higher than the one we um, go through um, earlier. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna go swimming then, right? <laughs> I'm joking. Epic, epic rapids here. Look at this. This is so nice. You got all these rocks. And then right in the middle we have the rapids. We're gonna walk through all these boulders to get to a closer point in the rapids so we can get a better perspective of it. Wow, this is very nice. I love these rocks. You have all these little pockets of water here too. Got a lot of fish. Gotta be careful where you're walking here. You can slip very easily. And be careful here if you come here when it's like raining, it'll be very, very slippery. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what an epic spot! Look at these rapids, huge! It takes up the entire width of the river, goes all the way across, just rocks. You have this like river seaweed, more rocks. Rapids, rapids, rapids. I highly recommend not swimming in here. <laughs> that would not be fun. And uh, if you see right here behind me, we have the captain and our other guide. They made their way across the rapids. They literally crossed through the water and they're there in like the seaweed of the river. It looks like green like plants that are stuck to the rock. They're in there trying to pull out fish. And we're gonna use that fish as bait to catch piranha. What is that? It's the Anumara. Anumara. Yes, okay. what we ate yesterday, the fried one. The captain was like swimming in the water yeah. with, with the machete and he saw the fish and he like basically just hacked at it and he wow. caught it. That's crazy, that's a huge fish. So we ate yesterday, looks yummy man. It's like a huge catfish. We are going to, um, yeah, yeah, this is what we uh, normally um, eat, it's our food. So when you want to um, have this special fish, it's a very, very um, delicious fish and very expensive in Paramaribo. When you go to the market, you won't find a whole one like this to buy. You're gonna find in, in, in slices. Yeah. It's very expensive. But now you can just come here and then um, catch those um, river monsters with these hooks. Amazing. Yes, and then we are going to try to catch um, some more. Hopefully we catch some. This is a big monster, man. How much does that weigh? 10 kilo. Basically what the captain is doing is he's gutting the fish, taking out some of the organs, and we're gonna use the organs to fish for more fish. As bait. Yeah, yeah, we use the organs as bait. This is also be eat it then? Eh? Yeah. I mean, the organs are the best part of any animal. For me, the best is the organs. Eyes, stomach, kidneys, liver. All right, let's follow these guys into the water. Oh, whoa. They're like, yeah, intense rocks here. If when it is wet, it's very, very slippery. Yeah. It's not yet wet, but be careful. Eh? So to get where they're fishing is not so easy. Be very careful. I'm about to cross a rock that is a little slippery. They're all fishing. I'm the only one not fishing, unfortunately, but <laughs> it's all good. I'm here on a rock right in the middle of the rapids. As you can see, the captain's far, far over there. He's trying to catch some fish. I mean, he's moving around, trying to find a different spot. And over here we have Julius and the other guide. They're like deep inside the rapid. They're really trying to find a spot where they can see something because they keep like, they, they'll fish for a minute or two, nothing, they keep moving. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully we catch something. I really hope we catch a piranha. I mean, that would be very tasty. I actually tried piranha on this trip. Really, really, really yummy. The cheeks, the best part. So unfortunately we didn't catch anything. We spent about an hour here just you know moving around, 
trying to see if we can catch a piranha or another fish, but absolutely nothing, nothing in these rapids. I think it's gonna be easier actually to do it like out there in the river. Oh my God. And then I gotta jump to that one. And from here, that one. Incredible rapids though. Definitely a must visit when you come out here. Let's get back on the boat and make our way back to our spot to go trekking. Made it back into our seat. Wow. What a morning. Started really early. Started at 5.45. 10 a.m. Half day already. Um, we, are we, and we are going to the... Um, so five, seven minutes, we are going back to the base camp. Base yeah. camp? Yeah. Okay, great. And then from there we're going to the jungle? Little trek? Yes. Perfect. Hopefully we we'll see some animals. You gotta hope, man. It's always hit or miss. And that's it. After like a 10 minute boat ride, we're here at base camp. From here, we're gonna go explore the jungle. This is uh, our base camp, Mabuka. It is called after the rapids. And uh, during our um, second day on staying uh, at Palamoy, then we are coming here. The third day, I mean, uh, third day because, um, yes, on the third day, because the second day is the hike in the jungle, and the third day is then here, and experience the water, the rapids, and also fishing. We just started our trek, and something really interesting Julius was telling me is that all these were created, all these treks were created by locals, and why is that? It is on to now, in this um, 2019, that people are still moving, especially the um, Amerindians from the interior of Suriname, they are still moving and to go to visit um, families. It is uh, very normal because um, they are used to that by boat, dugouts, and also hiking to the jungle with the handmade baskets on the back to take this heavy weight from many, many um, kilometers in distance and um, that is when they go on real journey to visit the families and uh, on to now they are going each year twice three times in a year also to the Amazon to visit their family what it's is the house of a tarantula oh yeah the huge um, you know one. this is a tarantula's house so it's basically a, a burrow like he burrowed himself in a huge hole wow super deep is he there is he there Checking for about 20 minutes so far. Nothing but a tarantula's little den. And that's it. Uh, you know, I'm very surprised that we haven't seen anything. But, you know, this is how it is. Wildlife is, uh, is so unexpected. I mean, and they could be right here. Like a tortoise can be right there. I would never notice. So unless they're really like just crossing our path, it's so hard to see anything. What do you see? What do you see? Oh, nothing. We are right now um, in the secondary forest and it looks like this, what you are seeing around you. More bushy. More bushy and um, very low bushy and uh, it's difficult to go um, through um, this um, vegetation. But in the primary forest where you have the high trees and um, a lot of lianes also, it's easier to go even without a machete. Super thick this bush. God, who cut this? I mean, for the machete, it's easy, I guess, right? And this is the primary forest. Way less bush, lots of super tall trees. This is like a juvenile. This is like a 200 year old tree. So many large trees, and this is like what you use to swing, right? George of the jungle. <laughs> a small dry leaf frog. Where? So it's called dry leaf frog? Mm -hmm. It looks like the, the dry leaves on the soil. The first animal we see today. <laughs> oh, he's, he's nice. You would never notice him. He looks just like a leaf. This is the, uh, what they call the quinine tree or the quinina. And it is used when people have malaria or even before. But when you use it, it's just a um, piece of the bark, 10 centimeters in one liter of water. And you let it soak well and drink it and it um, cleans your, your belly, intestines. And um, it gives you good appetite and uh, it makes you healthy. Even if you have malaria, it 
cure the malaria. Our jungle trek is coming to an end. We've been walking for over an hour. Only saw two frogs, saw um, some tarantula dens, and that's it, guys. I mean, it's this trek is a little more intense than yesterday's in terms of like how bushy it is. There's certain points where you like walk through a bunch of leaves and a bunch of like trunks and of trees, like things that have, you know, trees that have fallen. And yeah, I mean, you go through like two different types of vegetation, super thick bush, and then you go through all the trees. And here we are back at camp. Now we're gonna get back on the boat and go fishing for some piranha. I can't wait. Our captain has been fishing for bait the whole time we've been gone. He got a bunch, he got what, six different little fish? And two of them are completely different. I've never seen these before. Whenever you go on a jungle trek, I recommend bringing water, mosquito repellent, sunblock, closed shoes, long pants and long sleeves long sleeves if you want to cover your arms from mosquitoes and also from the sun fishing part two let's go piranhas piranhas you're fine in this water you can go swimming here the only thing is you can't be bleeding because then if not they'll come after you here we go back up the rapids I almost flew off. I like flew to the side, I was like, oh my God. 10 minutes after passing the rapid, we stopped here at a creek and we're gonna be fishing on this side of the creek, right? Cause the water's going that way. So the piranhas are most likely in this area looking for fish. Wading time. Okay. Wading on a piranha. It's pretty, it's pretty fast actually with the piranhas. This is already. Already? He, he's nibbling on it. We almost yeah, got him. Yeah. I'll, I'll just yank him. Yeah, <laughs> um, I have to fill it real good then. Yeah, another thing he was saying is that the current's a little off, so the you know the hook is going to the left instead of going to the right. It's okay though. Let's keep going. Still have a lot of time. Julius thinks that um, a huge piranha ate all his I bait. Felt it. Yeah, you felt it. I mean, probably just go like that, yank him, <laughs> see if he's still there. I told you. Done. We keep trying to catch the piranha, but unfortunately, he keeps taking all the bait. He just nibbles it, nibbles it, and we don't even notice. <laughs> And then you put it up and there's nothing. We've been fishing for like 20 minutes and unfortunately they didn't catch not one piranha. But he's saying we're actually lucky because we got the other fish and the other fish is tastier. All right guys, so we had an amazing day out here on the river. We started it off with breakfast like at 6.30 in the morning on a rock. Really epic scenery there, just incredible experience. Eating, relaxing, meeting a lot of people from the Netherlands, really cool people. And then we came out here, we went to the rapids, we saw the rapids, they went fishing. He caught a fish with a, with a machete, but we didn't catch any fish fishing today, unfortunately. <laughs> then we went up into the jungle, we trekked for like an hour, didn't see anything except a few frogs, a tarantula den. And that's it, I mean, but that's sort of how it is here in the jungle. It's hit or miss with the wildlife. You just gotta enjoy it, take every, you know, second for what it is. Really experience what flora and fauna is like out here. And now you know, when you come to Suriname, come down to Palumui. It's a one hour chartered flight to get here. Incredible experience, jungle trekking, delicious food. You will love it. Well guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Suriname. Let's go. Hey, what's up everyone? This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here, coming at you from Palumu, Suriname, super interior of the country. Right here is the Tapanahoni River, as you can see, beautiful rainforest behind us. And if you guys didn't know, 80% of Suriname is untouched rainforest. It is gorgeous flora and fauna. And right here we have the resort. So it's five big bungalows. Each one is divided in two, so you have 1A and B, 2A, B, and it accommodates 20 people. My room, is very simple as you can see. Wooden room, you have two beds, twin beds, you have mosquito nets. Next to that, you have a little desk. We have a closet, bathroom, and I have a charging area, thank God, because I always need electricity. I need to charge my batteries. And then right here, we have like a little hammock area, like a dock with like five hammocks. And over here, we have the docks, right? And that's where you get on the boat every single day. You get on the boat, go down the river, 
and go explore the rainforest. And so for the past 24 hours, I've been exploring. I went on a few jungle treks. I saw some of the rapids, ate some delicious food. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go have some lunch and then we're gonna explore the village because the village is right next to us. So it's the village and the resort and that's it. And then after that, we're gonna go on a plane all the way back to the capital of Paramaribo. So for lunch, we're having some delicious roti, we're having some pumpkin mash, we're having some aloo, some potatoes, right? And some chicken. Whoa, and this is it chili? Chili. Oh, this looks amazing. Oh my God. Enjoy your meal. That's insane. <laughs> Thanks, man. So get in here, get a piece of roti, go in here, grab some of the potato right here, some mash, delicious. Roti, pumpkin, delicious. Mmm. A little pumpkin, a little sweet. Mm. Oh yeah. Over here we have the chicken. Break off some chicken. What I have to do is I break it off, leave it there. Break off some more, right? Well, this one's a little hard. The chicken in the center, man. It's unreal. How fresh this is. So tasty, so juicy. Mm. So simple, but at the same time, freaking good. Mmm. Get some chicken with the roti. The mm. real good is that. If you guys didn't know, I'm a pro with this stuff. Roti. I do it every day. Break off some more of this. Get some chicken. And here's the roti with some delicious chicken. But I also put some super spicy like chili on top. Mmm. That's really spicy. Mm -hmm. Super spicy. Oh, but I'll get some more. Get some more of the chicken, break it up, put it with some of the pepper. Oh, it's good, man. I love the influence from India. No? Yeah, it's nice uh, dishes so they have. Uh, yeah, yeah, amazing dishes. Yeah, it's, it's really just having the, those delicious sauces changes everything. Because if not, this would be so bland. But this is um, real Suriname because Suriname is a real mixture of um, all the um, ethnic groups that we have in Suriname. Mm-hmm. And you mix the potato mash with the chicken. For being so simple, it's so delicious. You know? Grab some more. This time, grab the chicken. And over here at the very top, we have some of the peppers. Right there. Why not? Oh, that's spicy. Because I love the peppers or the chili so much, I'm gonna put some more here, right there. This time, just go in, get as much chicken as possible, right there. That get a lot of chilies. I'm a huge fan of Indian food. Chili's intense. Let's clear my sinuses. Oh, wow. Best thing to do is probably mix these two together, right? Yep. Pumpkin, mix it with some of this. I'm a big mixer, you know? I like mixing my food. And that's the great part about coming to these like resorts in the middle of nowhere. The food's always outstanding because it's super fresh ingredients. Everything comes like from right here. I love the pumpkin. Mmm. That was like pure pumpkin, right? Pure. Pure. So for lunch and dinner, they have this dining hall. Right here, they have a huge table, you know, for big groups. And in the back, there's some hammocks, there's other tables, relaxing area, and also a bar. To finish off my lunch, I'm having some coffee. Oh, really strong, really strong. All right, I'm good. Let's go to the village. Oh, man, you're okay, buddy. The brain cappuccino. Totally the village is literally right next to the resort and next to it we also have the airstrip that is the airstrip right there the only way to get here is by plane, by plane. no other way you can boat, but it take a um, couple days couple days right? yes like 12 days what? from albina by the border with french guiana and then you go up to the river upstream and then you hit into the tapanahoni river yeah yeah i just saw the map there i saw how it works if I would have gone, if today we went one hour, if we would have gone another like day or two, we would have made it to French Guiana, right? Yeah. So we have these two bridges that basically it's for whenever it rains, right? So you need these bridges. Wow. And here we are, we're approaching the village, you can see lots of houses on stilts. This one's on stilts. On the bottom is like their terrace, on top is their house. 
but that's also because the rain, right? Because the rain, they have to have their house on stilts. We are um, in the village, Palimu, and uh, this is the church that they visit, the Baptist church. And um, in fact, many of the people are Baptist um, convented. Yeah. And um, they are preparing now for a conference in September. And this is the style of living. At the moment, we don't see nobody because everyone is now like um, doing their own thing, maybe in the fields or somewhere making woods in the jungle. And uh, we are just going around and see how um, the houses are built. And uh, yeah, so the houses are all on stilts, still and this is because yeah. of the rain, right? Because Mainly. Of the rain. Okay. Yeah. There's, so there's not that many. I mean, there's easily like a dozen or two dozen houses yeah. here. Everybody's in the shade. Mm -hmm. No one's in the sun like us. Like we're yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the uh, village house and it calls in the Amerinya language Tukuspang or Paimang and it is where they do the meetings and celebrating uh, feasting birthdays and those things and uh, if there are some visitors and there is no room by the family they can also sleep in hammocks here around. Communal hall slash sleeping in case there's an overflow in, yes. in our house. And this is the model of the Wayana tribes Amerinian. You would think it's crazy that my guides have hoodies on. Actually, they're smart. They're covering up their necks and their arms. I'm the one that's like burning my arms right now. <laughs> no, you guys are really smart. I'm sure it's hot in there, but it's better to be hot and not to burn, you know? My guy Julius was telling me that the reason why the village is along the river is mainly because everything is done along the river. You know, they go fishing in the river, they bathe in the river, they wash their clothes in the river. So they always want to be near the river. They don't want to be too far inland because then they would have to walk far just to get to the river. And that's basically their source of life is this beautiful river. Yes, but um, the lifestyle of the Amarine is the, also the, uh, or the, um is uh, uh, in contrast with the maroon because the maroon are mostly inland not directly on the water they are always like um, protecting you don't see really the villages you have to go in then you can see that uh, we have the co-influence right here um, of the Palami river which uh, you uh, have to head it head on to go to Kasi Kasima and then the Upper Tapanahoni River, all, both of them are going to the south and the, the spring is from the mountain in the south. Okay, so I was asking them if they had anything for sale and they basically brought out a mini market here. They put it down here, they have yeah. flute, they have like some maraca, they have a little knife. What is that? It's like a, an arrow? Is that an arrow? It's wow. a, um, a mini uh, A mini arrow? Mini and then arrow. lots of bracelets, necklaces. <laughs> So they also have the pen flute. Pretty cool. And then that one's 50, not that bad. And this is like, this, this is like a dagger, like a little sword. Pretty cool though. I think I was gonna get myself uh, maybe a bracelet or two for my kids. Um, I, I actually like the piranha, the piranha jaw. It's really interesting, but I don't know. I can't really take it to America. That'll be weird, right? After going through their mini craft market, I bought two bracelets, one for each of my daughters. Definitely think it's worth it. It's made out of basically like small like seeds and leaves, right? That's all it is. Like seeds and leaves that have been put together into this bracelet. And yeah, now we're gonna go over here to this section. So a lot of people, they don't want me to film, but they want me to try a local beer, the Magnot, Magnot. Tell them, tell them how it tastes. Mm, tastes good. Yeah. Tastes very like, yeah. You can taste the alcoholic, it's been fermenting. Uh, it's it's like water, but it's a little thick. Yeah. It's, uh, as you can see, it's murky. <laughs> Not murky, cloudy. Oh man, it's strong. Yeah. And so I can have the whole thing. Yes, you can You can finish it. Up to you. H how much alcohol is in here, a lot? Uh, three to five percent. Three to five percent? Oh, I can do like 10 of these. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Oh, this is nice though. Mm, I like the cloudy taste to it. Yeah. Almost like a, a super, it's really super earthy beer. Yes, that's it really. Ooh, it was so good. We got a second round. It's really refreshing, especially in this heat. Oh, cheers, my friend. How do we say cheers? Yeah. How do you say cheers in your language? Not prost. Kurekeniten. Kurekeniten. You guys all gulping it down. Wow, that's some good beer. Super refreshing, cooled me down. Basically, I had like one beer. 
Awesome. Yeah, that's the best part about being next to the river is you get that breeze, yes. you know? Whew, that beer was really good. So earthy, so like, it was mm -hmm. almost like a milky, it was almost like a milk that came out of a tree. Yeah. You know, that's what I feel like. Mm. Not that much alcohol, it's pretty good. And yeah, yeah basically. But if you drink uh, too, too much, you get yeah. drunk. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. And so yeah, we explored the village. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the resort, grab my bags, and wait for the plane. We have a flight in 50 minutes. Charter flights, always fun. Okay, now we are heading back to the resort of the Mets. And uh, on our way, we have then the school just after um, five minutes from the village. School is literally next to the airstrip. And what we're staying on right now, this is the old airstrip back in 1950s, you said, right? And there's only seven airstrips in the entire interior. Yeah. Wow. That's it, huh? But uh, in, in the entire interior, they made this, with, they started with the seven, but today they have more than 100. Okay, okay. Yes. I was gonna say, yeah, because I know there's like 30 or 40 resorts like this all over the interior, so 100 different airstrips. And that's it, we explored the village, saw the parrot, tried some beer, now we're getting to the resort, and I quickly have to pack up. I have literally 20 minutes before my flight takes off. It's gonna be here right now. Let's hurry up. And here we go, this is my plane. We're leaving in three minutes. They're just offloading everything. Wow, they brought a lot of stuff. Hey, David, pleasure. Richard. So it's just you and me? Yes. That's it. And uh, also to Lucas, I think. Oh yeah? Am I with you in the front? <laughs> yes, you can sit in the front. I can sit in the front? That's amazing. Oh my God. This is gonna be... <laughs> this is what we're going up in, guys. What? This is so sick. Private, but private tiny. Oh my God. I'm nervous. I don't love these planes. They're too tiny, too tiny. No, I'll sit in the front. Okay. So all the way in the back? Like in this side? Oh my, oh my god. Oh this is tight. Oh, oh, yeah, you're okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. This is gonna be a, a thrilling ride. Fortunately, I have a kid that's not feeling good behind me. Is he okay? He's okay? You're okay, you're okay, you're okay. Don't worry, I'm here with you. I'm here. pilot <laughs> did an awesome job dude I was nervous half the time because there was a few instances where a lot of uh, a lot of clouds and we just felt it like in the middle of the cloud but overall great experience only a one hour and ten minute flight went straight over the entire country all the way to the north to Paramaribu all right what a flight what a flight there's no other way to get down there so you have to take a charter no matter what and uh, it's not that bad I mean it's a little scary 
obviously a little bit of uh, turbulence got me a little a little freaked out dude <laughs> but uh but everything's good thank god uh you know we made it only one hour flight one hour and ten minutes and now we're gonna go to a hotel tour yes yes what's up man pleasure we're, go we're going to Torrica. yes for sure perfect awesome let's go <laughs> great and this is Paramaribo. If you guys didn't know about Paramaribo, this is the largest city. It's the capital city of Suriname. Half of the population of the country lives here. First language is Dutch, then it's the Tongoli, and like there's like so many other languages. Huge mix, huge mix of ethnicities here. You got the locals, you have the Dutch, you have the Africans, the Indians, the Chinese, the Indonesians. I mean, really, really, really mixed in terms of ethnicities. A lot of different cultures. What I love about it is the food's like out of control. I think tonight I'm probably gonna go eat some Indian food or probably some Indonesian food or something. But yeah, I mean, really an incredible place. Uh, very small capital. Uh, I really think you, all you need is two days. So when you do come to Suriname, two days here is enough. You can do it all in terms of seeing all the major stuff, all the attractions. And I mean, if you really want to go all out foodie wise, uh, I suggest three, four days. There's a lot of things to eat here. And, uh, and yeah, here's the hotel. Let's get there. Hey, thank you. Oh, great thank you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. You too. Yeah. Uh, All right, so I just checked into the Royal Tororica, one of the best hotels in Paramaribo. And I'm staying in 4310, going up right now. Check this out. Huge lobby, like super high ceilings, easily like five stories. Whoa, super luxurious. This is like nothing compared to places I've been staying on this trip. I mean, this is like nice, modern, sleek. I love this, this white, the white here. So beautiful, very high ceilings. Got a super, super sick king size bed. Beautiful king size bed. I love the furniture. Look at this nice couch right here. Pretty cool table have a beautiful flat screen TV right here. Some more closet space here. Oh, okay, coffee right there. Probably the mini bar right here, mini bar, yes. And let's see the bathroom, let's see. Hotel Royal Tororica, super luxurious. Whoa, look at this. Man, I feel like I'm in a boutique hotel right now. This is really, really boutique. You got your nice marble, shower, toilet. This is amazing. I'm really, really happy that I'm staying here the next two nights. This is just incredible. Check this out. This is like real five-star hotel. We had such an amazing day today. We started off with delicious jungle lunch, roti slash pumpkin, what else? Chilies, chicken, delicious lunch. Very mixed with ethnicities there. You know, you have the native food, but then they bring in that roti, the Indian twist, and they bring in some of the peanut that, that's like Indonesian, very delicious lunch. Then after that, we went over to the village, walked around the village, bought a few braces for my daughters. I also tried some like local beer, very, very earthy. Not my favorite, but it will do the job for sure. It's a nice beer. Then we flew, we took a charter flight, one hour straight north to Paramaribo. That was really intense. I mean, beautiful, beautiful way to see the country. You know, being there with the pilot in the front, seeing everything, seeing the, the clouds as they come by. And you know you're gonna hit like some pockets, some, you know, some turbulence there and getting ready for it. I mean, just a whole different experience. It's like the third time I've flown with the pilot. Every other time, always in the back and you can't even see the pilot. That was just epic, epic experience. Then we made it here to Paramaribo and came here to the Royal Tororica, Royal Tororica. The luxury, luxury, luxury of luxury hotels here in Paramaribo. I mean, look at this room. What else can I tell you? This room is ridiculous. I can't wait to jump in bed. Well, guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Suriname. Peace. Oh.